In this video, we are going to discuss about the multi-substrate reactions. So, most of the biochemical reactions occurring in the living bodies are multi-substrate reactions. So, uh, these multi-substrate reactions means that uh, more than one substrate is involved in these reactions. More than one substrate is involved. So, we shall discuss about uh, the types of reactions which involve two substrates and uh, thus yielding two products. So, these reactions uh, uh, are involving two substrates and yielding of two products. And uh, these reactions are called bye-bye reactions. So, these multi-substrate reactions or the bye-bye reactions are often involving the transfer of certain groups. So, these involve transfer of groups. For a simple representation, let us consider two substrates AX and B. So, AX combines with B in a reversible reaction forms BX plus A. So, here we can see that the X group from the substrate A has been transferred to the B and the products thus have been formed. So, uh, for an example of uh, this type of representation can be glucose when reacts with ATP in the presence of hexokinase. Hexokinase is the enzyme catalyzing it. Uh, it forms glucose 6-phosphate and ADP. So, here we can see, so this reaction is the first reaction of the glycolysis pathway. So, uh, the phosphate group from the ATP has been transferred to the glucose uh, moiety here. So, uh, this was just a simple representation of uh, two substrate two product reactions. Now, the mechanism of uh, this catalysis involves two types. So, the number one is called the sequential reactions. And the second one are called the non-sequential reactions. We will discuss uh, each of these reactions in detail now. So, first let us consider the sequential reactions. So, in sequential reactions, there is a formation of ternary complex. Ternary complex formation means that both the substrates, for example, uh, let's say S1 is the first substrate and S2 is the third, uh, second substrate. So, the ternary complex formation means that both of these substrates which are involved in the reaction will first bind to the enzyme and then the products will be formed. Which means that S1, S2 and the enzyme uh, ternary complex will be formed and then the reaction will proceed and the products will be ultimately formed. Now, these sequential reactions can be further of two types. The first one is the random order sequential reactions and the second one is the compulsory order sequential reactions. So, let us consider the random order first. So, as the name suggests, random, in this uh, type of reaction, any of the substrate can bind first to the enzyme and any product can leave first. So, this means that any substrate can bind first and any product can leave first. So, it is a sequential type of mechanism and for a two-substrate reaction, it involves the formation of a ternary complex as explained above. So, uh, there will be two separate binding sites for each of the substrate on the enzyme. Now, let us consider uh, a representation for this type of reaction. So, consider two substrates, let's say AX and B. So, AX is the first substrate and B is the second substrate. So, what happens is that the enzyme and the first substrate will bind forming a binary complex EAX. Then, the second substrate B will bind and a ternary complex will form that is EAXB. 
then reorganization between the groups will take place the x group will get transferred to b and this will get formed and now the product will one of the product will be released and we are left with e a and these further lead to the production of the second product e plus a so enzyme has been uh, formed in the state as it was before now this was a one type of reaction in which uh, uh, the first product was the first substrate was ax and the second substrate was b and uh, the first product was bx and the second product was a now uh, the reaction which i have written here involves the binding of the substrate ax first now it is also possible that the other substrate can also bind first so if we take that example when uh, the substrate b binds first then we get e b complex and then when ax the second substrate in this case binds then again this thing uh, the ternary complex is formed and uh, then the first substrate here uh, the first product here is a and e b x is formed b x plus e we are again left with the enzyme as what well, as it was in the initial state so a biological mechanism of uh, the random order sequential mechanism involves the formation of phosphocreatine from creatine which involves the consumption of an atp molecule which is converted to adp so if we represent uh, uh, this reactions clelands representation what we see is that either atp or creatine can bind first so in the upper representation atp is binding first and the creatine is binding later while in the lower representation the creatine is binding first and the atp is binding later so any of these mechanisms can work out so uh, if atp is bound first then the phosphocreatine is formed first however if creatine is bound first then adp is uh, formed first so we can see this so atp binds first and creatine uh, binds later on and uh, the phosphocreatine product is formed first and adp is uh, formed later so as we have studied that in the random order sequential mechanism the order of the addition of substrates and the release of products is random that is any of the substrate can bind first and any of the product can leave first for example here we see that the formation of phosphocreatine and adp from atp and creatine is catalyzed by creatine kinase so creatine kinase is the enzyme catalyzing this reaction so either creatine or atp may bind first and either phosphocreatine or adp may be released first the so the this phosphocreatine is an important energy source in the muscle so although the order of certain events is random the reaction still passes through the ternary complex uh, including the first substrates and then the products so there is a formation of ternary complex now let's discuss about the compulsory order mechanisms in comparison to the random order mechanism where the uh, the order of binding of the substrates and release of the products was random that is any of the substrates can bind first and any of the products can leave first but in comparison to that the compulsory order mechanism is the sequential mechanism where the order of binding to and leaving the enzyme is compulsory so order of binding and release is compulsory let us understand this by the simple representation suppose ax and b are the two substrates so enzyme binds ax there is a formation of binary complex then the second substrate arrives and ternary complex is formed then reorganization takes place then bx leaves and we get the second sub the second product also or this uh, representation or this mechanism can go other way also where the second substrate that is the b binds first and then the second substrate comes there is a formation of ternary complex 
reorganization takes place where the uh, group x from a has been transferred to b then the first product a leaves and ultimately the second product bx also leaves sorry e plus b So one of the example of a compulsory order sequential mechanism is the formation of lactate from pyruvate where NADH is getting oxidized to NAD positive. So what happens is that in this type of uh, reaction, in fact, remember that to most of the reactions which involve NADH or NAD positive follow the compulsory order mechanism. So what happens is that the NADH, that is the coenzyme, it always binds first and the product lactate is always released first in this reaction. So NADH binds first, then the pyruvate binds, then there is formation of a ternary complex and uh, then the reorganization takes place leading to the formation of the product lactate which is released first before the second substrate, before the second product NAD positive is released. Now, let us talk about the non-sequential reaction mechanisms. So, uh, the formation of ternary complex do not take place in these types. So, ternary co complex does not form. So, in these types of reactions, what happens is that when a substrate binds, suppose that the first substrate has bound, then its product is released, then the second substrate arrives, and then its product is released. So we can illustrate it like so. Suppose the first substrate AX binds to the enzyme leading to the formation of a binary complex EAX. Then reorganization takes place. The X group from the substrate A has been transferred to the E and we get a modified enzyme form and the product A. This then gets released and this a modified enzyme then binds to the second substrate. So the second substrate B binds. Then again there is a formation of the binary complex with the second substrate. Then intramolecular reorganization takes place. And we get the enzyme as it was in the initial state. And the second product is formed. So as we can clearly see here that AX first binds to E. Then there is a formation of EAX, which is a binary complex. And uh, then intramolecular reorganization takes place where the bond AX is being broken and EX is being formed. So the first product A then leaves before the second substrate B arrives. So uh, since only one substrate is present on the enzyme at any one time, so there may be a single binding site on the enzyme. So another intramolecular reorganization takes place here and the second product BX leaves and the enzyme is uh, retained in its original form. So we can clearly see uh, that in the sequential mechanisms there was a formation of ternary complex while in the non-sequential mechanism the ternary complex do not form. So the major uh, difference is that in the sequential reactions both the substrates first bind to the enzyme then their respective products are released but in the non-sequential mechanisms uh, first uh, substrate comes it binds then its product is formed it gets released then the second substrate comes it binds and its product gets released so uh, this also indicates that in the non-sequential reactions there is only single binding site that is why only one substrate is binding to the enzyme while in the sequential one uh, there were two separate binding sites for each of the substrates so this is all about the sequential and the non-sequential mechanisms. An example of the non-sequential mechanisms may be in which uh, the reactions in which the amino groups are shuttled between the keto acids and the amino acids. So the uh, these reactions are being catalyzed by the transaminases. So one such uh, example is in which aspartate is the first substrate, alpha gagey is the second substrate and our products are oxaloacetate and glutamate. So as the aspartate binds to the enzyme, the enzyme accepts the aspartate's amino group to form the substituted enzyme intermediate. 
the first product oxaloacetate is formed and it is departed then the second substrate alpha ketoglutarate binds to the enzyme accepts the amino group from the modified enzyme and then it is released as a final product glutamate so as we have clearly seen in this mechanism that the first substrate comes the corresponding um, product is formed it is released then the second substrate comes it binds it the corresponding uh, product is again formed and it is released so this was all about the sequential and the non sequential mechanisms where two substrates are involved leading to the formation of two products